And we will uh, be starting that in just a few minutes. We have a few slides that we want to uh, go over first. So here we go. We would love for you to check in with us in uh, the chat box and tell us where you're viewing from. Uh, as you know, we are um, available virtually throughout the state of Kentucky, we're nationally. Uh, so whether you're local or state or national, we'd love to know where you are um, attending from. Today, our agenda is going to conclude success stories, a main speaker, sharing of active job leads, partner updates, and the next time at Job Club. Our mission is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and learn the best practices for the job search. And we meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find the schedule and topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So we hope that you will um, always be very, very alert to that website so you'll know what's going on. I want you to meet our team. I am Diana Doggett. I am an extension specialist with UK uh, College of Cafe. We, we have uh, also on our team, Caroline Friesis. She's the Director of Alumni Career Services with the UK Alumni Association. Uh, Nicole Way is the Employment Specialist with, at UK Steps, Temporary Employment. And we also have a great, great team um, as well. And they are on your, your uh, slide and they are a host of other people that are so very, very valuable. We have Christy, Lindsay, Suzanne, Sunny, uh, all joining in to make this presentation the best we can. Job Club is currently hosted in hybrid format. And that means that in person, we are in Fayette County at the Cooperative Extension Office, and we have a live audience. And uh, it is, it's really, really uh, beneficial if you can attend locally. Uh, we're hoping to have some more satellites throughout the state, but uh, it does give you the opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one contact and, and sharing. Uh, so that we can find your needs and help you with your search. We're also available on Zoom webinar, and that means that we have a chat moderator available so that uh, if you have a question, comment, uh, you will also receive additional information through that chat box. So uh, that's a real benefit to our Zoom attendees. And then we're available on Facebook Live. Uh, it's view only, and we do not have a chat moderator um, available there. We hope you'll take advantage of checking out our free job club resource packet. Uh, it's online. It's at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. And within it, you will find just an array of resources that will help you uh, during that job search. And it'll, it'll be a resume review, review checklist, uh, some informational interview tips. So just go there, check it out. If you're in peer in person, we give you a hard copy packet. And uh, we, we, we know and, and think that you will find a great benefit from that. We also want to encourage you to join the Central Kentucky Job Club Sharing Community on LinkedIn. And it is there that we post uh, jobs in the interim of our job club sessions. So sometimes we have one that comes up and it's the deadline is really, really close, but uh, we want you to be aware. So, so that's important as well as some other uh, important resources that we feel like you might benefit from reading. Um, so, so join us on, on LinkedIn. We have a, have a great, great audience there. I want to remind everyone that employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. And so when we have someone in person, um, we get, allow a one minute spotlight to share their active job leads with the group later on in the program. And if you're online, then we would love for you to raise your hand and we will also uh, permit and, and give you the opportunity to share uh, your, your job announcement. We want you to watch the, on your email later uh, today for job leads that have come to, to us 
to the job club staff, um, and they will be set and shared with you um, later on this afternoon. So anyone that has registered with us through webinar or in person uh, is on that list and receives that email newsletter uh, later on the afternoon of each session. We're always cognizant of that some attendees are conducting a confidential job search. So naturally, they don't want the news out that, they, that they're searching. So let's please be respectful of their privacy for the job search of others. Uh, check out our job-related articles that we include again in our email newsletter. And then most importantly, and one of the biggest questions we're asked is, are the recordings of our sessions? And yes, there are, uh, and they are available on our website, which we've repeated a couple of times and it's on your screen, um, www.ukalumni.net slash job club. Well, we want to welcome everyone, of course, but, uh, but individually we want, to add, we want to welcome our first time attendees. So do we have anyone in the Fayette County um, session that is a first timer, anybody? First time, yes. Okay, let's give a warm welcome to them. If you are first time online, would you just tell us that? All we're doing is just wanting to recognize you, give you a warm welcome, and uh, also inform you that you're going to receive that um, newsletter later on this afternoon. But in addition to that, when you attend for the first time, you get a survey, it's a short survey. And that feedback will place you in our notification system so that we can tell you about future programming. So you could scan the QR code uh, on the screen, or um, if we have your, your email address, we'll be contacting you with that short survey. Thank you in advance. So now it's time for success stories. And success stories are defined in uh, multiple ways. And I know that there's people in the audience that have been attending regularly that have some successes that they can share with us, which means that they've revised their resume, uh, they've, they've uh, broadened their network, they've reached out to some other people in, the, in their past employment history, uh, perhaps they've had an interview, They've attended job club. There's all kinds of successes that we, we really do deem very, very important and worthy. So if you have any of those, uh, you know, ultimately, if you attained employment, then that is the greatest, greatest one. But there are all kinds of successes that lead to that, that final uh, achievement. So make sure you, 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 Provide those in our, our chat box. It's encouraging you to others. Normally, we have one that we, we share it with everyone with. And if and when you get employment, we would love for you to contact us. Just tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your new job and your journey. And we'd love to share that with others so that they, too, can be motivated and encouraged. Well, it is with... Um, just a real delight that we are introducing and welcoming our speaker for today, Audrey Jones. And Audrey is with the uh, LFUCG. Uh, she is with Lexington. I got to think about it. My screen doesn't have it. I always got the acronym really, really well, but she's with Lexington um, Urban County Government. And so we are really, really pleased to have have uh, someone from our local government to share with us today. Um, she is an HR analyst and I know she's got such an insight for candidates that are looking for jobs and we just, we're, we're so happy about that. And we love that connection with local government because we know that there are a lot of jobs in each and every county that, uh, that are very meaningful. So this is a way for you to, to connect hopefully to your local government and get some really, really good trips, tips on how to apply for those jobs. Later on, we're gonna hear about uh, specifically LFUCG's process for hiring. So Audrey, welcome, and um, we'll let you take it over from here. Great, thank you all for um, this opportunity. Uh, it is 
Um, definitely um, something that is close to my heart. I am currently the H an HR analyst within LFUCG, uh, Lexington Urban County Government. I've been in this position for about six years now, but worked uh, for the government for eight. Um, but prior to coming on to the government, I actually worked for a staffing company and was actually um, very uh, very involved in the job club, meaning I would attend and do uh, presentations, answer questions, present jobs. I was actually at, at one of the one events that I really, really liked um, and enjoyed was the Resumania, um, reviewing resumes and doing mock interviews. Uh, so I did that um, as a recruiter for Robert Half uh, prior to taking on this position. Uh, before that, I was in grad school and working in a number of different positions um, from retail uh, and customer service focused, uh, student affairs. I actually worked for UK for several years in student affairs as well. So my background is pretty diverse. Um, and I, have, I can say that I have finally found my place as a HR analyst here. Uh, some people might be asking, what does an HR analyst do <laughs> as far as uh, with the local government? I actually have two dual roles here. Uh, one would be the, the HR analyst for employee relations. Uh, so I handle investigations as it relates to harassment, uh, workplace violence, employee grievances, and disciplinary appeals. Um, on the other side of that, I do uh, take care of uh, most of the uh, policy and professional development training uh, within our training and development group. Uh, I am one of three analysts within our section. Uh, we also have a manager as well. Uh, so we work as a great team with the other sections of uh, HR. Uh, at the end of this, I will have another colleague, a manager, Dan James, come on and answer any questions that you have about the hiring process. But I'm excited today to talk to you a little bit about a topic that I'm pretty passionate about. Um, and that is preparing for your next job um, interview. Uh, some people may be wondering why an HR analyst would be talking about preparing for a job interview. Uh, I think that this topic spawned from uh, looking at the hiring process, talking with some of our employees about the process. And you have to think some of you have been in the same industry, in the same job for a number of years. Uh, so you may have not gone on an interview in a really long time. And so sometimes it's nice to have a refresher course about interview etiquette and some information that might be useful to you. All right. So this is a quote. Um, I know it's it's good, better, best, never let it rest until your good becomes better and your better becomes best. This was a quote that kind of came to me when I was younger. And I, I think I probably stumbled upon this quote. I'll be honest with you. I don't know exactly the author or where it came from, um, but it was something that stuck with me um, many, many years ago, probably over 20. Um, and, and I've really carried it through to every uh, professional uh, interaction, but also for interviewing specifically. And so I just wanted to start with that because it really does take practice to become a better interviewee, um, just like any other position um, that you would be practicing for. So it took me many years um, to feel confident in interviewing for positions. And I definitely feel like more practice, the better. So the objectives for today, I want you to be familiar with different types of interview models that might be helpful for you to identify. Uh, I really want to discuss the common interview questions. Uh, more importantly, how to answer those interview questions using the STAR method, if you've uh, ever heard of that. I want you to be prepared prior to the interview by making a plan uh, and how to make a good impression uh, in the wrap up as far as after the interview and the follow up. Okay. All right. So the purpose of the interview itself is the interview is there to enable the hiring official to get the evidence of the person's ability to do the job. So this is an opportunity for them to ask certain questions to assess your ability 
to be able to uh, follow through with the position, have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to do the position, or the potential to uh, take on uh, responsibilities within that role or future roles. Now, there are several different types or models of interviews, and some of you may have um, been familiar with some of these, as they're more popular uh, than others, uh, but these are the main basic uh, interview models uh, that I have found uh, to be useful. So there are telephone screening interviews. Telephone screening interviews are a way for, if there's a large candidate pool of employee, I mean, uh, applicants, and uh, they want to kind of surmise whether they are going to bring those candidates in for an in-person interview, they will do a five to 10 minute telephone interview with so certain select candidates. Uh, this is one of those it, it interviews that proves to be efficient and uh, time saving, especially in today's world. Uh, so they will elect some some companies will elect to do a phone screen interview, potentially a Zoom interview that, like I said, very brief, just, just to assess whether or not they are going to take the next step to bring you into the uh, in-person interview. Now, a stress interview, this is what we traditionally um probably associate with maybe an interrogation or something, you know, from the old cop shows or you see the interrogation there. This is meant to give the app, put the applicant under some type of stress uh, in order to figure out how they would perform with other stressors. So this might be, uh, for example, if you've ever gone through the police process, um, the stress uh, interview that they do conduct is the polygraph. Right, that's a pretty big uh, stress um, for me if I were going to do it. Um, but that is a form of a stress interview. Then there's a team or group interview, and this is not what you traditionally. I think people get confused over a team or group interview, but this is actually not a panel interview. This is actually an interview that is conducted with the applicant with members of the potential team that they'll be working with. So they gather co colleagues. Uh, and they form a group and they uh, allow that group or team to interview their potential colleague. Now, the last three are what you're probably more um, accustomed to. You've got the traditional interview with a situational interview and a structural behavioral interview. A traditional interview, of course, you would have the interviewee and the interviewer. Uh, sometimes this would be in a panel, um, mostly with at, at least an odd number amount of um, panel members. In that interview, they are going to ask you situational based questions and structural behavioral questions. Uh, so with those two, they're going to give you some, if this happens, what would you do? So situational questions and behavioral questions to figure out what your past uh, accomplishments in your past positions has led you to do um, and gather the knowledge to do the future task or abilities in the job that you're applying for. The panel interview, as we mentioned, is an interview conducted by two or more uh, hiring persons. This is generally an odd number. I know I said odd number for each of the panels. Uh, I know with LFUCG, you will find that there will be a requirement of at least three to five people on the interview panel. And that's just to say, if there's like a tiebreaker, uh, we don't want there to be anything uh, left out there. So we want an odd number of, of panel members. Uh, this gives an opportunity for each member to ask a question of the candidate and each panel member uh, brings a different set of expectations, uh, skills, and knowledge to the interview. So with the panel, you're going to find different roles within that panel. Um, it, you may find someone who is the director or the owner uh, of the organization that you're interviewing for, but you might find that there might be certain HR uh, professionals that are a, a part of that. You may find that there are team members that are part of that, and maybe someone who's outside of what this position does. Maybe it's someone um, that works adjacent to this position and they are put on the interview. So you want to have a diverse amount of people. Uh, this is efficient and time saving. As most people know, interviewing for a whole day is, is definitely time consuming. Uh, and like I said, typically they're going to structure situational and behavioral questions for each candidate and applicant. 
before the interview. I always highly recommend that each applicant candidate do their research pr prior to going into the interview. You can conduct online research by looking at someone's divisional website or organizational website. Uh, you can uh, research their social media pages and post. I know the city has several pages uh, that are created specifically for the departments. And so that's very helpful to applicants. Any recent press releases that the company has issued um, and just staying up uh, current on any current events that that, that uh, employer organization is currently experiencing or proud of. Uh, any initiatives that they may be responsible for is also helpful. But doing research online or within social media, uh, it provides a solid understanding of the goals and how you as a person and applicant fit into the organization ahead of time. And it does help you answer specific questions when you're in the in actual interview. Now, we want you to study the job description. Sometimes when you apply for the job, once the job has ended or the posting has closed, then you can't have access to that job position anymore. So the first thing I always encourage people to do is to print out an, um, the actual job posting. Keep those job postings collected. Uh, go ahead and underline specific skills that that organization is looking for. Maybe even highlight that. And um, think about examples from your past and your current work that align with these requirements because you're going to be asked about that. How your current um, examples of work are going to apply to this new position so that you can paint a picture that you are um, the right applicant for the job. Now, I put this, this visual here is that sometimes when you're looking at answering interview questions, Sometimes you get a lot of thoughts, uh, you know, there's a lot of thoughts racing and you're trying to go ahead and get the first answer out. So uh, I wanted to say that it's kind of like a controlled chaos here uh, and that sometimes trips people up in answering questions. So I always encourage people to practice common interview questions. Now, the common uh, interview questions I always ask you to practice would be any open-ended questions. That's uh, that's probably going to be the first question they ask you, tell me about yourself or tell us about your background. That's an open-ended question, but definitely want to pick out points of your resume um, that are applicable to that question and not reveal too much information because they're going to ask you specifics on a lot of different areas of your background. There are situational questions, meaning that there is a right answer, meaning they're going to ask you, give you a situation and ask you, what would you do? They are looking for a specific answer and how you apply your skills and knowledge in answering that question. So situational questions will lead to a specific answer they're looking for. Behavioral questions is going to be give them a indicator, basically, you know, your past behavior is, a, is an indicator for future behavior. So they're going to be looking for, well, tell me about a time that you, you know, in, you uh, incurred a difficult customer, those types of questions. And then the self-evaluations questions is, are definitely, definitely some of those that are, um, tell me about your weaknesses or your strengths, uh, asking you to draw upon and reflect about any of your past work. Uh, so this right here is a, is a tricky question, but it can be positive in turning, meaning turning those weaknesses, but also turning them to positives. Now, in answering any questions, I always follow this STAR method, and I use this bell curve because that is a very good visual of how you want to answer the question. The STAR me method basically is the first is the S is stands for situation right? Um, you want to, when they ask you a behavioral question, you want to paint the situation, give them enough information in the beginning to lay the groundwork on what the situation is, but don't spend too much time there. You want to go ahead and explain the task that is tasked of you. So tell me about a time when you incurred a difficult customer. Well, this one time, this was what the, the situation was. The task was trying to get this customer uh, their their uh, return, um, you know, and get them a, a, either a gift certificate or merchandise credit or 
cash return. Uh, and then you want to go into the action. What did you do? What did you do to solve either the issue or the problem at that time? And then what was the end result at that point? So don't leave them hanging and tell, tell them too much about the situation and too much of the task because they're really looking for how you did, what were the actionable items that you did to get to the result at the end? So it's the STAR method using that bell curve. Now, I always encourage people, recruit a friend, a family member to practice your answers out loud. Uh, sometimes, you know, we can be our worst critic, right? But let's go ahead and employ someone who uh, wants you to do well and ask them to, to run over common questions with you so that they can give you some insight as well. Uh, practice with them, uh, be by yourself, answer those questions. I do that quite often when I'm preparing for, you know, a presentation or a training. I do practice out loud reading certain things. Um, today, not so much. One cup of coffee, remember. Um, but uh, we want to practice your uh, questions out loud. Now, some of the examples that you might want to come up with ahead of time is that you want to come up and have uh, examples of your past jobs, any projects you were a part of in that job, any initiatives that you helped, uh, with and, and kind of initiated anything that you can, you know, secure as an example of what you did in your past jobs and what your responsibilities and roles were. Any clubs that you were a part of. I know sometimes with um, people who are don't have like a necessarily a long work history or maybe not necessarily have a lot of projects they were a part of, but they are a part of organizations outside of work clubs, volunteer positions, and educational projects are definitely all three that you should have ready um, to be able to speak about. Uh, and don't discount yourself as far as going ahead and kind of tooting your own horn about your involvement in these things, because this is your opportunity to let them know why you are the best candidate. But have those in your back pocket so that you can talk about those uh, freely and confidently uh, when asked to pull those out. Now, before the interview, you want to, these are just some ex examples of questions. I call them smart questions here uh, that you want to kind of run through. These are common questions. Can you explain some of your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Um, how would you describe the characteristics of somebody who would succeed in this role? Because remember, you're asking, as much as they're asking questions about how you're going to be the best candidate, you need to figure out whether or not you have everything you need to know about this position so that you can make an educated decision when they make an offer to you. So ask those questions, have those ready. What divisions or departments does this team work with regularly? How do the divisions or departments uh, typically collaborate? What does this process look like as far as the interview process? Um, that's an important one as far as anyone applying for jobs with LFUCG because of the nature of how um, the council and how the jobs are approved. Uh, that process does take a little bit of time. And so there's got to be some realistic expectations there as a candidate, but you want to know that process. And then what are the challenges that you're currently facing in your role? Now, before the interview, you um, want to, there are things that you want to ask. There are also things that you, to avoid uh, when you're interviewing. Uh, you want to ask about the division, the organization. Uh, what sections are you going to be working with? Other teams, uh, other positions, and, and career growth, because that's important, especially if you want to grow with the company. Things to avoid, I always encourage people, uh, really, most positions are going to post the salaries or salary ranges. I know that the city does that. Um, anything that has to do with leave back policies, because that indicates to the interview panel that your only concern is with the benefits portion or when you're going to be getting vacation or sick time. Um, and all of those things, to be honest, are on a lot of these organizations' uh, pages for benefits. So you can actually see a lot of those things before the interview. Uh, so you want to, don't want to ask anything that you can research yourself. And then lastly, of course, if you are hired or not, typically they're not going to tell you that at the end of the interview unless they're really looking for someone. Uh, but that's something that um, is definitely something you should avoid.
All right, before the interview, I want you to make a plan. A couple of things I want you to really uh, to kind of remember is what plan out what to wear, when to arrive, and what to bring. Now, these are just a couple of, I'm just gonna kind of click through these because um, I want people, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to interview. Uh, and I always think that you need to plan out what you're going to wear prior to the interview. I think it's great if you're gonna buy something new, but you've got to understand you're gonna be sitting there. You're already in an uncomfortable, out of kind of uh, your element experience. You don't wanna wear something that's uncomfortable and that you're not used to wearing. So definitely take that in consideration. Dress codes that I've kind of identified here, you've got the business professional. Uh, this is what you traditionally see as far as a professional environment and interview attire, but depending on the organization and what their dress code is, it may differ from organization to organization. Next, you have the dress code is business casual. This is a, a little bit more casual than the professional, clearly. Uh, professional tops, dress, pants, closed toe shoes, always button down shirts for uh, men. The newest one I have heard of is the smart casual. Uh, this in kind of introduces some dark denim there. Um, also, no tie, you can notice there. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you're working in a creative environment, potentially their dress code is not as professional as maybe if you're working in a law firm. So um, you want to be aware of what their dress code is. I definitely think that in, in an interview sense, um, you may want to dress maybe a one step above what the dress code is there just because it is uh, your time to make a great first impression. Now, during the interview, speaking of making a good first impression, first impressions matter. So treat everyone you encounter with respect from the security guard uh, in the parking garage to the front desk attendant uh, to the receptionist. Um, you want to treat everyone that you encounter with respect because you never know that if they are going to be asking for their opinion on this, um, this matter. I practice good manners and body language. I think that's important. I mean, I, I would like to hope that people have good manners, especially when they're making a good a first impression, but sometimes people are also not aware of their body language that they're giving off in an interview. Um, sometimes I have a tendency to talk with my hands, so that's an issue that I have worked to kind of overcome. Uh, so being able to kind of control those and exhibit body language that's confident and confident in, in, in yourself and your ability to do the job. Uh, win them over with your authenticity and positivity and respond truthfully to the answers. Don't just, excuse me, um, don't just uh, respond uh, with what they're, what they're wanting you to, uh, what you want them to hear as far as, okay, well, I'm gonna tell them that I have this program knowledge, but I don't really have that. So that's gonna come back up. So you definitely want to respond truthfully. You want to tie your answers back to your skills and accomplishments. That's why I encourage you to have great work examples to go ahead and be able to speak on. Keep your answers concise and focused and do not speak negatively about your prior work or prior persons or supervisors or the working environment that you're coming from. Uh, that's really a turnoff for uh, interview uh, panelists is that uh, you don't want to speak negatively of anyone, um, especially either yourself, but also prior managers, supervisors, or organizations you've been a part of. Now, I always include this slide on all of my presentations for interviewing. Definitely during the interview, be aware of discriminating questions and information. Uh, these are a no-no um, for the panel to ask you. Uh, I know they seem very like very offensive and kind of out there and direct in the point, but when you're working for, say, LFUCG and you're on a panel, these questions are, are, are definitely something, we look at all the questions to make sure that they're not discriminating questions um, in any way for the uh, applicant. But when you're working with a smaller company, potentially, uh, they may not abide by a, a lot of the EEOC um, requirements as we, we do. So these may slip up. So just know that these are some discriminating questions that would uh, have you kind of be judged in a different light if you're being considered for a job. And if they're asked of you, just know that you do not have to answer those questions or there's a way that you can ask that, answer those questions where it wouldn't put you in um, kind of a area where you're not a non-applicant. 
Now, discrimination, discriminating questions, I think these are the sneaky ones and that, that interview panel is, uh, they sneak in there uh, that can be discriminating. Uh, it may seem innocent because they have to do with the topic at hand, meaning they have uh, some merit as far as maybe your position or the position that you're speaking uh, or you're applying for. But when did you graduate? Uh, I know that sounds really interesting, but they can probably assess that from your resume or your application. Uh, so that may be one of those discriminating factors to know uh, to know age or um, you know length of time that you were in um, university. Uh, did you go to school with John Doe? Um, that your affiliation with John Doe? We don't know if John Doe has a, a negative or a positive light in that interview panelist's uh, mind. So your association with John Doe may put them put a bad taste in their mouth because they may say, okay, John Doe does this, this, and this, and now this applicant is very good friends with them. So he may be or she may be one of the same. Uh, where do you normally hang out on the weekends? Where do you live? And transportation. That's a tricky one. Uh, transportation, um, you know, if you have reliable transportation, if it's a concern that you're working in a position that needs to be on call and you need to be living in the Lexington area to do perform those on call, that's important for the interview panel, panel to know if you live outside of Fayette County. Um, so that's one of those questions you have to assess of what's really important and where are they, what type of information are they trying to extract from you by asking that question. Now, after the interview, I always encourage people to ask about the next steps. Any questions that you have about the position, yet yeah, definitely um, ask those. I always like to ask people what they like about their job um, most because that is a future indicator, you're going to be able to fit into that culture. And if that's something that you look for in a position as well, because it's a two-way street, you're being interviewed, but you're also interviewing them. Uh, you want to make sure that you're asking about next steps so that you're clear and your expectations are lined out. Uh, like I said, with the, the city, that's important to know because there are definitely steps that you have to take after the interview and you want to have realistic expectations on the timeline there. You, I always encourage a nice touch is to send a personalized thank you note uh, to your interview panelists. I think that adds in the, a personal touch. Um, it can be handwritten if you want, but it can also just be an inter, uh, email. I think that that goes a long way because you got to think that these folks are taking time out of their day to serve on an interview panel all day, most likely. Um, and you want to thank them for their time as well. And they should thank you as well for, for coming in. Uh, I have included here uh, this, this link. It's the ultimate guide to following up. It's after the job application. Uh, this gentleman, he gives a very great uh, response and he lines out how you do a follow-up after an interview and it's, it's superb. So I highly recommend if you have an opportunity to click on that and see that, that would help you out as far as what to do um, after the interview and those next steps. Now, just lastly, I just want to remind you for those job seekers out there, it's a good idea if you're starting the job process to create a professional email address. I think, you know, when you're especially leaving university, potentially you've got an email address that may be your personal ones and it may say, um, you know, junk saver 2000 um, at Yahoo, but necessarily that may not be the picture you want to be in a professional environment. So maybe make an email address that has your name in it so that it does reflect differently. And also it can help you kind of assess what's junk mail and what's, what's going to be sent to you as far as the job um, organizations and positions that you're applying for. Social media. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have social media. It's great. It's definitely effective. But I highly recommend that either you make your uh, social media accounts either limited access or you go through and maybe clean up some items that you wouldn't necessarily want to be reflected um, in that because as long as as much as we don't want or we think that people don't look at people's email, I mean, their Facebooks and their, uh, what is it, their TikToks and things like that, um, they, they can access that information. So you want to be able to present the information you want to present to an employer, um, not for them to seek what pol political affiliation you're a part of or what uh, a social event you were at the last time. So just being able to be mindful of those social media cleanups. 
And then also, I think people fail to remind or notify the references. So not because you just interviewed and it finished, you need to tell your references that you are in the interviewing process. Go ahead and prepare them for that. You may want to go ahead and give them a copy of your resume because when that call comes, they need to be able to accurately speak to your background and they may not know all the positions that you've ever had. So it's always nice to go ahead and prep them. Hi, I am you know, through the interview process. Thank you for serving as a reference. Here's my resume, just as a reminder of my background. So uh, they are prepared for that call when that call comes. Well, we have reached the end of the presentation. I hope that it was informative. I hope that at least you took away something that you didn't know before, or maybe it was a refresher of things that you did know, but just a nice reminder. Uh, so I will open it up for any questions. And I have Dan James, who's actually in my office now. So if you have any questions uh, for him, we can go ahead and answer those as well. Okay, so we've got some um questions in the chat it says how do you respond to discriminating questions um and that you that you do not want to answer dan you have any insight on that well good morning everyone i'm dan james i'm the hr manager over uh recruitment classification compensation here at lfucg uh to that i would tell you that normally you know we vet out questions for our interview processes and we try to get catch those before they even happen but if you happen to get a question that um, you feel like is is uh, something you don't want to answer um, you could say I declined to answer that question or could you rephrase the question uh, so that maybe that would trigger them to get a, a different type of uh, question so that it's not as discriminating because we're very careful here not to or to try not to do that with our, our processes. Good question. I don't see any more questions. Okay. When you have not worked for several years, how can this situation be addressed? Is it a type of discrimination question? Should you give an explanation? We often get folks that uh, in an interview will notice gaps in their history, in their work history. Uh, you should be prepared to answer that question if there's a, a legitimate reason. Um, you know, some people have taken time off to take care of a loved one or, uh, you know, to deal with an illness or anything. Now, you don't have to tell them that because that's protected information, but uh, you can just say I was unable to work at that time, uh, you know, and, and go from there. Or, you know, some people get their degree or they take time off to um, to hone their skills or something like that. So um, for those that haven't worked, you know, they might be unemployed. Uh, you know, you might say I was actively seeking work during that time. Uh, or I had a skill set that's very specific and it was very difficult for me to find a job in that field at the time. So there's certain things you can deal with that. Uh, you're not required to give an explanation. Uh, there are interviews and hiring managers with us that will ask questions on gaps of employment, especially if they're, you know, huge gaps. But a lot of times folks come back with pretty um, standard answers, you know, stay at home moms, or I had a child, or I had to take care of a, a sick loved one, something like that. You know, that's not information they have to give us. It's sometimes what they offer. But yes, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to give an explanation. Uh, and it's really not discriminatory. It's just uh, asking question about your uh, your background and your, your previous experience and why there might be a gap in your in your employment history. Okay. Having more questions at this time. Dan, do you want to talk a little bit about certain um, hot jobs right now with the city? Sure. Um, anybody that has a CDL. Uh, a commercial driver's license. CDL drivers are in high demand in the government. Uh, we're also uh, highly seeking corrections officers at our correctional facility, our jail, uh, police officers, firefighters, telecommunicators, E911 operators, those telecommunicators that actually are the call takers at our E911 center. Then we also have dispatchers that are telecommunicator seniors that actually dispatch units 
from fire, police, uh, ambulance, potentially the water company, electric company, uh, gas company, things like that. Those folks are, are in high demand. Uh, and we also have a lot of uh, entry-level jobs that are getting ready to open up. Uh, the mayor just approved 35 new positions in the budget this year. Uh, so there's 35 additional positions in addition to the ones that we already have open. So if you visit our website at lexingtonky.gov backslash jobs, you'll find uh, our job openings there and we update them almost daily now. Uh, and they're across all 33 divisions that we have from time to time. So we're looking for licensed individuals, entry level positions, all kinds of different positions across government. So our processes uh, take a while. Our hiring process is a little longer than most, but uh, it's a very worthwhile career. I myself have been here 10 years now and, uh, and have enjoyed every minute of it. So uh, we have a lot of jobs that are out there and, and you'll see that they'll be updated almost uh, daily, but for sure weekly. And we have a list that posts in the Herald Leader every week as well uh, of items that are on our website. So please feel free to ask at any time if there's something anytime you're looking for. Um, I can give Audrey my contact information and we can send that out and you can ask questions anytime you want. Any other questions? I think we're almost at time. There I am. Um, like Dan said, I've included on here on this last slide, there's a QR code that you can scan there that takes you directly to our external link for, for positions. If not, there is the website at the very bottom. And like you said, it is updated um, daily for those positions and there should be new positions apparently to come. So that's exciting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Audrey. Yes, I was just still muted there. Thank you so much for the presentation today. This was some great, great information. I hope that you all uh, who have attended took some really good notes or just took some notes. I uh, just want to mention that um, we will have this. This was a recorded um, meeting, and so this will be available uh, at, a, at a later date, not too much later from now, but at a later date. Um, and so we'll send out information about that today as well following our job club, well, I should say later on this afternoon. So thank you again for, uh, uh, of course, you said you attended before this. So thank you for attending job club. Thank you for coming back and uh, actually being our guest speaker. So this was wonderful. That's like full circle thank right you. there. Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, thank you um, for sharing the job leads with us today also and answering some additional uh, questions. Alrighty, so let's see here. Um, What's next with Job Club? We'll go ahead and move through the next slide here and talk a little bit about, um, let's see here, I do want to mention before we move to the next slide, do we happen to have any other employers in the audience today? I do want to give you a moment to speak about any other potential um, um, vacancies, positions that may be open with your businesses. Are there any others in the audience today? Yes. We do have here in person. Oh, okay. All right. Someone's in person. Okay. Well, I'll let you speak. Oh. <laughs> it's Krista Martin with Direct Employers Association. I hope everybody is doing well this morning. We are currently still recruiting for a sales support representative with our Recruit Rooster team. Uh, it is remote, um, but we're based out of Indianapolis. And then also, I'll provide the link for the U.S. National Labor Exchange, with we, which we co-host with the National Association of State Workforce Agencies. We're also currently now the host of the Kentucky State Job Bank for the Kentucky Career Centers, which is powered through the National Labor Exchange as well. So we currently have over 43,000 open positions throughout the state, uh, and you can utilize that to search for jobs, internships, apprenticeships, employers, labor market information, uh, and the like. So hopefully that is helpful helpful to everyone. Okay. Well, thank you uh, definitely for sharing that information. And once again, that'll be listed um, in our job letter if you weren't able to gather all of that information. And so we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide here and talk about our um, extension office. Uh -oh, we might be having some technical difficulties here. 
We can move to the next slide. No. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and just mention that our um, corporate extension offices um, here, uh, let's see here, we have a variety of opportunities and um, for families and children and of course adults to come out to our extension offices. And, um, oh, okay, sorry, I did, before I get that, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Of course, you can email us job leads. And um, we also have, sorry, we wanna remind you to check your local UK extension office for our classes and volunteer opportunities. Okay, we have uh, our extension offices are actually in each of the 120 counties, um, and, such as Fayette County. And we are meeting today, where we are meeting today, I should say. Uh, of course, I'm virtual, but where Job Club has been held, meet, meet, uh, held at today. So check the website for uh, extension educational workshops, services, and resources. All righty, and if we wanna move through here also, we'll talk a little bit, of course, if anyone is interested in uh, some additional information about um, some help with one-on-one -on -one resume writing or um, just some interview, you know, some additional interview questions. If you just want some of that one-on-one -on -one attention to help uh, help you get all, you know, get you get you set up for your interviews, your future interviews, resume writing, as I mentioned, um, applications, things like that. Feel free, of course, to reach out to our alum and um, UK Alum Career Services. And uh, with that program, click on there and there's our professional um, development and career counselors who will be happy to meet with you and discuss um, all the needs that you have, all the questions that you have confidentially too. I do want to mention that this is a confident, you know, many of you are here, um, you know, on a confidential job search. And so we want to be sure to um, let you know that the job search, it is confidential. So and any other, uh, sorry, in any uh, meetings that you have, that they are confidential. This information, any jobs that were shared today will uh, also uh, be posted on our LinkedIn page. And as I've already mentioned earlier, we'll also have this information available later in a newsletter. So let's see here. Oh, okay. So we're going to talk about, um, before we talk about our next um, meeting with Job Club, I do want to mention a few jobs that we have. Once again, my name's Nicole Waite, and I am a part of STEPS Employment with the University of Kentucky. Um, and our employment team will actually be hosting, I shouldn't just say our employment team, but the University of Kentucky will be having a um, job fair. So we're having an, actually, it's this weekend. I know it's Mother's Day weekend, um, but it's going to be early Saturday. So you still have plenty of time to go out and spend some time with your mothers. I'm a mother myself. And so, but I also look forward to attending this job fair. So it is May the 13th. And that is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Gatton Student Center. So it's the University of Kentucky's Student Center. There's plenty of parking there uh, right on the corner there. And so come in and be able to talk, uh, visit the different tables, talk to some leaders, supervisors, employees about different departments, gain a little bit of insight about what um, happens in those departments to get to see, you know, fill out to see if that would be something that's a good fit for you or just to gather a little more information about future employment. So I invite you all to come out. I will actually be there myself once again. So feel free to come by and speak to me also at our steps table. But uh, yes, don't forget about our job fair. And so before um, uh, closing out here, I do want to mention with STEPS, we do have some jobs, job leads here. Um, we have a STEPS SRNA program. So if you're interested in any type of medical support, like nursing support, uh, medical assisting, nursing care technicians, things like that, this is an awesome program. Um, it, I believe it is um, six to 12 weeks, up to, up to 12 weeks. Let me say that. Um, but I will provide that link. It's going to be in the newsletter also. Um, but yeah, it's a great program. My coworker, Roxanne Ruth, is actually helping to support this program. Um, it, it, like I said, it's awesome. It, you're able to go to school, learn hands-on, network. You're going to be working with uh, staff at the university. And uh, once again, just a great, great way to get your foot in the door with the University of Kentucky, if that is your goal, or to learn, like you said, uh, those skills that you may have always been curious about learning. So Definitely take advantage of that. We also have a um, highlighting a admin support associate position uh, at our res life. And so once again, those positions will be posted later this afternoon. And so let's see here. What do we have next? Oh, okay. So on May the 23rd, uh, LinkedIn or linked out. 
That is the title of our next uh, job club meeting, how to build a knockout profile and network yourself into your dream job presented by our very own Amanda Shagney. Of course, many of you who have been uh, attending job club know who Amanda is. Amanda is actually in an organizational development specialist role at Enterprise Learning at the University of Kentucky, or I should say uh, here at the University of Kentucky in healthcare. And so we are great to see her come back and speak with, uh, well, I should say we were feel, feeling really great about her coming back and speaking with us. Happy to hear this. Amanda's always full of knowledge. Um, so uh, let's see here. Are you tapping into your full networking potential on LinkedIn? So this uh, session will be will address how to build a robust profile and strategies for using LinkedIn to network yourself in new new job leads. You do not want to miss this one. Uh, she is a great presenter and there will be a wealth of knowledge provided during this session. So um, if that will be it, uh, let's see here. We'll go ahead and end this meeting for today. And thank you all once again for attending Job Club. Audrey, thank you once again. And we hope that you come back. And uh, once again, don't forget about that job fair. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for everyone in the 